Hello, my name is Justin Arna. I'm the Science and Operations Officer here at the National Weather Service Office in Gaylord, Michigan. Today we're going to do a demonstration of the ESTF Extrapolate tool. Basically one of the tools you can use to move features across the forecast area. Um, features that be in pop or sky and then and thus resulting um, um, from pop you can get your weather grids as well. So let's take a look at an example here where we have a line of showers um, drawn in our forecast area with a line of 90 pops um, that's been smooth so we have some kind of rounder edges around it. Um, what might you do um, if you were expecting this, if we were to take this grid, copy it and paste it you know, a couple hours down the road, um, um, say you wanted this for this area to move, now you could take this and you could actually do the move copy tool and, and physically move it over to the to the uh, east here. Oops, I uh, have some extra pops here. But you, you get the idea. You could move it over to the east and uh, the problem being is that extrapolate is different than interpolate. If I took this grid now and interpolated it, for hourly data, you would basically see your line of showers vanish and reappear um, down the road. That's really not what we want. We want a, steadily, a steady progression from west to east, um, say in this case. Now to do that, you can select the pop grids of interest. The ones, basically, the first one is the the key one. This is the one that you're going to start with. That's going to be moved and interpolated for you, and then how many hours in the future you'd like to interpolate. So if I take the under the populate menu or wherever you have it housed locally at your office, you can find the ESTF extrapolate tool. It comes up with a bunch of options. So let's go through these one by one. First has the option of which direction do you want to go in time? Do you want to go forward or backwards in time? Obviously here we want to go forwards. Um, now, this, this whole next section is kind of devoted to how do you want to move the feature. Um, most typically, I would suggest in mo most cases, you are going to just use something like the distance speed tool in D2D, get a uh, motion and, and direction of a particular feature, and then you will project that into the future using some of the, uh, the controls we have here. Say, say our s line of storms is moving east at 25 knots, so there's 25 knots. We're going to use the two um, direction, so we're going to move it to the east at 90 degrees. Um, but there's another option. What you can now do up here is uh, you can use a model and the model's forecast winds to advect your feature. So basically treat your line of storms as a passive tracer and it will be advected from west to east or whatever direction the model believes given the model you choose, the version of that model, and whether you what layer um, you would like to use. You could also uh, make motion based on Corfidi vectors, both forward and backward propagating. Um, again, you would need to choose a model to do this. We won't look talk about the swath right at the moment. We'll use that in a little bit. Um, but let's say we want to move our feature east at 25 knots. Now, what do we want to backfill with? The western edge of the domain is going to be advected east. What do we want it to backfill with? Would you like to backfill with original data, which in this case would be a pop of a one, which is a one is which is which is back here. Um, uh, data from the model edge is very similar, or zeros, which are just like zeros to advect in from in this case that would advect in the western side of the domain. So we'll say original data here. Um, we'll we'll do another case in a minute though where you might not want that to be the case. Uh, diminishment rate, um, would you like these to pops to decrease in time? Perhaps you are becoming less confident or it's a weakening line of showers. You can dis determine how fast you want things to diminish, either fast, normal, or slow. Again, you're going to have to play with these to make sure you know you're, you kind of get the, the evolution you're expecting. So let's do slow in this case. Um, grid blend method, we'll leave this alone here, but basically um, uh, this is going to allow you to blend back to what you have in the either forecast or official database. So would you like that grid four, five, or six hours from now to actually be the one that was originally there to begin with? And so it would help, it would gradually blend back towards that original grid. Safe mode, <coughs> this allows you to uh, populate a set of grids with what you originally had in there so that if the tool runs, you don't like the output, you can then run it with the restore mode turned on and you will get um, your grids, your original grids back. You can also smooth the output when you're done, which is sometimes nice. Um, just helps to give you a, a cleaner look when you're all done. So let's let's smooth it um, a few times, have our motion in there, and run it. Now it runs quite quickly. If we take this and move forward, notice we have a line of showers that gradually weakens as it heads east because of that slow diminishment rate. Um, so that's something to keep in mind there is do you want that type of diminishment rate? If you select none, then the 90 pops that we originally had would affect east without 
without diminishing. So um, that's a nice option there. Um, basically, you can track something from west to east as many hours as you would like. Now, let's take a look at another example. Oh, one more caveat here. Um, the this tool struggles if you actually have a a zero pop to find in your forecast area. Um, that's why I've clipped them here at one. Um, for some reason, the extrapolation struggles when zero is is put in there, likely due to the math involved. Um, and so, as long as you clip your values at one, you should be good. Now, let's start everything at one. And let's try another scenario where you have a, a feature that's actually larger than your forecast area. So let's start with a 90 pop, advecting from or moving from southwest to northeast into the forecast area. I'm going to smooth this a bunch to start to just kind of you know have a basic idea. So say we have a basic uh, um, area of uh, categorical pops that's advecting north and east into the forecast area. Now if I took those same options, if I just went for the next four hours. Under Populate, run the ESTF Extrapolate tool. Say I want to again go forward in time, I'm going to use my own data and I'm going to move at 15 knots to the northeast, which would be 45 degrees. Say I don't say this is a uh, precipitation shield moving into the area, I wouldn't want it to diminish. Um, and I want to backfill with original data because I don't want zeros to come in from behind where the, uh, the original precip is arriving. Um, it's already pretty smooth data to start, so I think I'll leave that alone, and I won't use safe mode for this case. If I run that, and if we look forward, we could see our precip area advect northeast with time. But you'll notice there's some kind of odd stair steps that happen on the northwestern and southeastern flank because of how that domain is being basically advected north and west. So how do you get around that? Can you can you clean up these edges, or do you need to go and press the smooth time, smooth tool more uh, when you're done? Well, there is a really nice thing that you can do, and if I uh, select this and go back to the ESTF extrapolate tool, I would say I would like to create a swath, and um, I'm going to leave those 15 knots. Remember, it's moving northeast, so 45 degrees. Um, so creating a swath will actually help make it versus having those jagged edges. It's going to more smoothly move things in time. I'm going to press the smooth button a few times after we're done as well. Um, and otherwise, we'll have all the same settings we had before. Now to create a smooth or the, the smooth option with the, with the swath, it's going to take a little longer. The extrapolate tool takes longer to run in this instance. And so you'll see it run here um, as we go forward in time. But um, I think you'll like the result is a much cleaner looking pop grid um, that moves northeast with time. So let's take a look at that output as it finishes up right now. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Notice in each of those hours, the pop grid moves up much more smoothly. Um, there's not those jagged edges on the sides. And uh, we get a, a much smoother progression um, that looks a lot more realistic. So you may want to do that. Again, the, the tools will. Um, um, you know, it certainly uh, this is a nice option. It will take a little longer to run, um, but uh, certainly a good option to consider. Now, a final thing we'd like to try. Let's um, go back to our original one. Say you had uh, originally run this over the first four hours. You really weren't sure what you were going to get out of the extrapolate tool. Say you said 25 knots to the uh, 25 knots to the northeast. And say we don't create a swath, but we're going to run safe mode just because we're not sure if we're going to like the output. So we run it very quickly like that. It will run quickly, but unfortunately, you get that weird stair step pattern. Luckily, what happens here is when you do that, you will actually get these um, forecast pop grids that show you your original grids. And you say, ah, I like what I had originally more than what I have just run with the tool. So all you need to do is you reselect those grids, you do the ESD ex extrapolate tool, and you run restore under safe mode and when you do that it will repopulate your grids with those forecast pop grids and now we've got back to what we had originally so it's a nice way to get back to what you originally had um, if uh, for some reason the tool gives you output that uh, isn't to your liking so again uh, ESTF extrapolate you could do this with sky as well as pop and obviously once you have your pop you can um, run a weather tool of your choice to create your weather grids but again this will give you a nice steady progression um, both in cases where you have uh, maybe a lot of showers moving across the forecast area or in this case where you have a steady stratiform precipitation area moving in through your forecast area. Thanks for listening.